Hello there, I woke up today to hear the sad news that one of the greatest influences in my life had died. When I was younger I used to listen to the radio with my mother. She had listened to BBC Radio 4 and the BBC World Service and there were two correspondents on the BBC that I admired greatly and they played a large role in influencing my decisions to come to Australia and to encourage me to go there. One was Michael Peshard, who mainly did TV reports, but some radio ones too, and the other was Red Harrison, a man who had a silky smooth voice. Well, I heard today he died at the age of 75 in Sydney. I always found before today there was very little information on his life on the internet. All I knew it was he'd worked as a newspaper editor in Australia. And there were many of his reports, of course, on websites such as the BBC's, but very little info on him. Well, he emigrated to Australia as a teenager and worked as a jackaroo in Queensland before working for the ABC and prior to that having worked in the newspaper industry as an editor in Perth and Sydney. Well, he used to present the AM program in Australia between 1981 and 1986. But to British listeners, he was better known as their BBC radio correspondent in Australia. To me, I used to hang on to his every word intently I used to listen to the reports. I wanted to suck up every detail about Australia. And I didn't have the internet at the time. There was very little Australian news in the British newspapers. So him and Michael Peshard were my two main sources for what was going on. And I used to just listen to the radio to hear his reports. He had a wonderful voice. I think greatly underrated. And I want you to remember, Red, and everybody else, but I'll never forget you. I hope that people will recognise you and remember your work. And you won't just be one of those broadcasters that happens to have died, as we all do eventually. Because to me, you were a great influence and a great inspiration. So I'd love you to be remembered as more than just a broadcaster. Because for me, you helped influence my decision and inspire my decision to come to Australia. So, dear viewer, please remember Red Harrison. Many of you won't have heard of him. Some of you will. But he was definitely one of the greatest influences in my life. Without people like him, I may never have gone to Australia. He was my educator. He was my teacher. And he was in many ways the voice that told me all about it, that distant land, the land of my dreams, the lucky country in many ways, Australia. So, Red, rest in peace. And I hope, and I want you to know, that you will not be forgotten by me and I'm sure many of your listeners won't forget you either. That's Red Harrison who died yesterday. Thank you. This is AM and a special edition for listeners in Western Australia and in Sydney with 2 Triple J. I'm Red Harrison and once again this morning the name and all the headlines is Mr Justice Lionel Murphy. Just a short while ago, his conviction on a charge of having tried to pervert the course of justice was quashed. The, the controversy final over the final report of the Royal Commission into the Nugent Hand Group. And incidentally, it's reported that more than 200 paragraphs of that report were censored. But from what remains, the Commission found no evidence that Nugent Hand was involved in running drugs, no evidence that it was dealing in illegal arms, no evidence that it was involved with America's Central Intelligence Agency. Well, that last point in particular has astonished one of America's leading political writers who's been following the Nugent Hand story. One all draw in the test against New Zealand yesterday is the team led by Kim Hughes in South Africa. A few hours ago, the rebels lost the first of their one-day matches against the provincial northern Transvaal side by just seven runs. And 13 people who did not see this match were the staff of Australia's embassy in Pretoria. It's understood the Hawke government ordered them not to go. But Jeff Parry, the Nationals reporter covering the tour, told Mark Giffard that disease morning, the AIDS is not spreading as fast as had been feared, and certainly not as fast as in America. Dr Blewett said that by the end of next year, there'd be 450 AIDS cases in this country, and that's 150 fewer than had been expected. Professor David Pennington, chairman of the National Advisory Committee on AIDS, told Michael Heath this morning these figures are good news. But in the long run, he says, we are going to see and thousands more people, people to its members and to Australia. That's it from the papers, and that's it from AM until tomorrow. On ABC Now, the time, half past eight.